Hello and welcome to Kids Sports. Thank you very much if you're just joining us. I am Mamudu Gajaga. On tonight's show, Gambian Taekwondo athlete won the championship in Tanzania and we are going to talk about that. He's here in the studio with me, Babukar Bob. Also, we'll be talking about from athletics to football, making the journey in the United States to pursue a big football dream. Manima is a player who is on a journey and you will also hear interviews that we had with him earlier. We will also be talking about volleyball at the grassroots level as 100 children are currently on the training to become volleyball stars in the future. And this has been organized by the Gambia Volleyball Federation. Crisis hit the Gambia Basketball Association as the entire executive tendered their resignation. The reason why they resigned, we will bring you up to speed with all of these details. This plus many more on tonight's Q Sports. Stay tuned. Welcome and thank you if you're just joining us. This is Q Sports and I am Mumudu Gajaga. We are going to begin the show with Taekwondo because there is a Gambian who had won double gold medal in the International Taekwondo Championship recently ended in Tanzania this month. And I have with me in the studio the pleasure to introduce to you Babukar Bob. Babukar, double gold champion, welcome to the studio. Thank you so much, Mr. Gazama. Uh, my name is Babukar Bob from the Gambia Taekwondo Association. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet my flow brothers to their studio to say a lot about Taekwondo or oh, my championship in Tanzania. It's been a long time I have the opportunity today to face the crowd of the Gambian population to say many things about Taekwondo. So I really love your show. Yes, welcome. Um, it's great when we saw it on the social media that a Gambian had emerged victorious in the 70 kilogram category, mm -hmm. which you won, and also in the 68, you won double gold. Tell us about the journey. How did it all begin? Yeah, the journey was uh, very hard, very tough. The, time, the first time I had it from the, the media, I have an instructor from uh, Sweden who told me that there is a championship in uh, in Tanzania, Darul Salam. So I began to start the process with the association and I went to Sport Council to inform them about the journey. So it was somehow tough with me, you know, because there was no financial or there was no support from, from the association, from no one else. But still now I keep on the feet. I go out searching for help. But still now I have the feet. But I know that I can represent the Gambia anywhere because if I have the feet. So it began from there. I went to my parents and I tell them. I went to Sri Sars and others and tell them. So all of them give me some help. So, so it's like basically you struggle to get to Tanzania even to uh, participate in this championship. Yeah, I struggle a lot. I spend my own money to travel, paying my transport fee, you know, going everywhere because only to represent because I'm, I'm seeing only the Gambia flat. I'm not seeing for myself, I'm not fighting for myself because it was a tough time for me because I was in Germany this year for the uh, World Championship. So the same I struggle for myself for the championship. You know, if you see many, many youths are in going for the, uh, for the back way to struggle for their lives. So I even go up to there and meet them in Germany. But still now they see me to stay there, but I say no, I'm going back to my country. And I know that I can do it there. For you, it's about the career. Despite the challenges, you still want to go ahead and to make sure that you achieve this big dream of becoming a professional Taekwondo person, maybe in the future, or even having a, a club in Europe where you are going to train your Taekwondo professionally. Yeah, it's been a long time since I, since I was in the Gambia Taekwondo Association. Since 2006, I was struggling. Uh, but uh, later on, I thank God I see myself, uh, people are interested in me, even in Europe. Because right now, 
where I'm standing or the competition I'm from, uh, there are a lot of people that pay for me and they are not from this country. They pay my hotel and they pay my flight ticket. They do everything for me. And he, the guy is from Sweden. And he knows my talent, that's why. And I have a lot of support from uh, Netherlands. They're giving a lot of money, everything for free because they know what, I cap what I'm capable of doing. Because if you see me fighting, you just like, when, I, when I'm walking at the street like this, you'll say, oh, he's a, look, look at this boy. But when you see me in the ring, you know, you get surprised by my fight. So all of those people see me, how I struggle. Even Slovenia write a letter for me to go and naturalize or go and particip uh, participate in their championship. And they will sponsor everything. And I take it to uh, Genosi. Uh, if they're hearing me, they will know what I'm saying is true. They wrote me a letter that I should go and participate in their championships. They will pay everything. Only to have the visa was the problem because they told me that if you want to have the visa, you will go up to Egypt. So that was my big problem. So, so I'm doing this for the sake of Gambia, for the love I have for my country. And I always raise the flag, even they don't give me anything. When I go outside, I raise the flag because I know I'm from Gambia and I always raise the flag. So that's why I'm keeping on this every time going fighting for the name of Gambia, even now it's still gonna be on from my pocket or from the pocket of other people. But still now, that love I have for the Gambia, that's why I've been to Tanzania, I've been to Ethiopia for the African Championship. I went up to final. I went to Germany for the uh, world, world Championship. And I you know, won a lot of matches there. So it's a great pleasure for me, really. Uh, Babakar is still on the journey. You went to Tanzania to represent the Gambia yeah. with all the struggles. In fact, it is far worse for you. You have to even minimize your spending. Yeah. And even food is a problem. Tell us about this. Yeah, because uh, unfortunately, because the money I take along with me, uh, it was not enough. For That's me. your pocket money. That's my pocket money. Because I was having championship in Senegal. Unfortunately, when I reached there, there was no championship. So coming back to Gambia, it would be another expensive, you know, to spend a lot of money. So I said to myself, let me sit here and take time and train with them so that when they are going, I can go with them. So, but uh, it was a very hard journey for me because there was no pocket money. I was trying to calculate. So the time I read there, I was no, having no currency of Tanzania, the ceiling money. I was having zero pocket money. So what, uh, unfortunately, I buy some foods before I read there. In Senegal, there are some chips and some biscuits. So that when I go there and uh, some oats, Quaker oats, we normally call it Quaker oats, I buy it there. So in the morning, in the evening, I normally eat that. But Not to cut you, but this is something ridiculous. You're an international athlete who is representing your country at an international championship. You would have to go through all of those things. Yeah, sport in Gambia, if you, if you talk about sport in the Gambia, just like Taekwondo, it's been a long, long time. Those, those who are watching, they know what I'm saying. Uh, just like talk, we know how to talk, but to act is a problem. Right now, we have a lot of masters, a lot of instructors that are there listening to me or seeing me in TV. Uh, they have not been doing anything, just sitting there, just competing in the seat. I'm the president, I'm the vice president, I'm this. But the kids are there training every day and night. They love the gym, but no help from, from no corners. We are there only to train. When you have somebody that is sick, you can hear one day they will only call you and say that, Bob, three days a championship in Senegal, are you ready for it? You don't know even the guy, whether the guy was prepared or not. So that's a big sim, because that happened to me when I was going to uh, Senegal and Azerbaijan to represent the Gambia. It was a big sim for us, because we went there without no train. We went there without no good knowledge about the Taekwondo, no, the, the new rules, we don't know anything. We go there just like a blind fighters. So we went there, we disgrace our country. So I say to myself, I did that mistake and I will rectify that mistake. And I will do it whether they help me or not, with my own pocket, with my own strength, I will go and fight for the name of the Gambia and I will raise the flag. That's why I'm doing all of this, going to Germany and coming back going to uh, Ethiopia, Uganda, 
in these two years, three years, I did all of this with my own pocket. There is nobody who can say that helps me. And I take my own athletes from different, different clubs. If you hear, if you uh, can ask Fernando, Fernando is the one that sponsored me last time. Mm -hmm. Fernando, he, yeah, Fernando sponsored me with $5,000, give it to me to take the kids in Senegal for them to compete. I do that, not the association. I am the one who created that kind of initiative and initiative. take the kids to, the Senegal, to Senegal for them to represent the Senegal, uh, Gambia. It's very tough for, to make a sport. If you see it right now in, in different, different, different martial arts, in different, different sports, you see people are going away, running. When they go to Europe, they, you know. They have scorn. Now we are going to show you some very interesting demonstrations about Taekwondo. And we have in the studio, Babukar Bob, so some of your skills. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Gejaga, for giving me the opportunity again to show you some. I want to show you guys the technique of fighting. When you want to fight with your opponent, straight away just stand like this. Stand like this. Just does the yop chagi. Go with this. First kick. One, two. On top of the head. Because the head is three points. Side kicks is two points. One, two. Yes, kick. One, two, come again, kick like this, stand like this, open. Or race, when you want to point, block, move sideways, punch. That's the mean. One move your sideways, punch, you, you kick. That's the turning kick. Sometimes you kick like this and stand. Control your steps, always. That's the way I always fight. To be a champion is very difficult, but you need to train it. Stand like this, because that's the way now the old people fight. Everybody is fighting. The champions are fighting like this, one step, two step on top. Go on back, kick. Sometimes kick, kick. Two kicks, right? That's, that's my way of fighting. All right? That's the champion. Fantastic demonstration. Um, I wish we could continue talking about your journeys, all the challenges that you faced. But I'm afraid this is all that we have time for. But thank you very much for coming to the studios. Thanks so and much. Then, uh, thanks um, so much, Mr. Sharing Gale. your passion for Taekwondo and all the struggles that you went through. Thank, Thank you. you so much, uh, Mr. Gajaga, for, for this opportunity that you give me. It's been a long time I never stand or appear on TV. It's never happened. Yeah. Thank you so much, brother. Exactly. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. Welcome back. This is Q Sports and I am Mumutu Gajaga. Coming up next, we're talking about the story of Manima Steve Mellons, who left the Gambia at the age of six. She was into athletics since her arrival in Holland, but now decided to switch to football. Since 2012, she has been a footballer and has even trained with the main team in her local club. And later, Manima had the opportunity to go to the United States of America. Now, she plays college football with the Navarro College team. Let's get more on her journey. Let's hear from Manima herself. Hello, my name is Manima Stelmans. Thank you for having me on your show today. I changed from athletics to football. That's right. That's be because my brother was playing football and my dad was his trainer at the moment. And I went often with him to help him coach his children from his team. After a while, I liked it so much that I started playing football myself. I made the transition to the US because I always dreamed about going to the U.S. And like you said, the women's team is the best in, in the world, so why wouldn't I? Further, did I like the combination of playing football at a high level and getting a good education. The change of environment. Mm, I must say, I had some difficulties with it. I wasn't used to 35 degree weather. When I came here, we had to practice in this weather. I was used to 
20, 25 in summer times. There were stops. So it was hard for me. But now I'm kind of used to it. But still, I don't like I don't like the heat. And managing school and football at the same time, it's a hard task. In off season, we practice three times a day. It was physically hard, but it was manageable. But when school started, we had practice, we had games, and we had school. And to manage those things, it's hard. And I'm still trying to find a balance between those things. Where I want to see myself in a few years, I would see myself be a professional football player and earn my money by the thing I love, and that's football. If the Gambian team would ask me, I wouldn't know what I would say, but I would say for now, time will tell. And if the American team comes, that's the same answer. But if both team comes, I don't know what I'm going to do, but we'll see. The Gambia Basketball Association has been hit by a crisis, leading to the resignation of the entire executive because there were wild allegations from basketball league clubs. There was a congress that was organized which didn't go through and also an AGM which had so many problems as far as the organization is concerned. The entire executive, as we mentioned earlier, tendered their resignation and this has been reported by the Point newspaper. For more details on that and also an earlier press briefing that was organized by the basketball league clubs. Let's get more. It was last year, 2nd of July 2018, that the stakeholders, the basketball stakeholders, teams coming up together, putting points together, affecting basketball. And then the only way we can convey to the executive, that is by having a meeting with them, with the entire executive. So we wrote to them on the 2nd of July 2018, introduce ourselves as a basketball stakeholders committee, and then a request for an audience to have a meeting with the entire executive. At some point, they, they, wrote, they wrote us back and then said that we cannot meet with the entire executive committee because some of them were not in town and then some of them are not coming back anymore. So we, they rather, we rather wait until they want to meet with us until they desire to come and meet with us then they can contact us then on the 16th of october we wrote to them again after having all those correspondence we wrote to them again on the 6th of october 2018 that since they don't want to meet with us we are going to boycott all games all basketball activities organized by the gambia basketball association until we have that meeting because some of the items in the agenda that we wanted to discuss with them were how much money was given and then uh, what does the contract say and then the tournament rules how much uh, is the team going to get, get when 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 the team wins the championship and all other issues affecting basketball the executive members most of them were not coming uh, the then president the, the, we, did, we, ne we, ne we never have a technical committee. All those issues were part of the things that we, want to dis that we wanted to discuss with them. Then the former president, who is Papanjai, now resigned. He also was into politics when he was the president of Gambia Basketball Association. And in our constitution, it, it is said that any, stake, any, any executive member in the executive 
should not be into politics while in basketball. And then our basketball court at the stadium here, we have the posters of Papa Njai contesting for mayor. So it was used as a political ground by the executive. So all these things have been an issue in basketball. Then in June, then, then we wrote to National Sport Council for a vote of no confidence. And all the clubs sign except two, which is YMCA and then old school, that we have no confidence in the executive again. So we wrote to them that we wrote a vote of no confidence and we don't want them anymore. The letter was copied to the Gambia National Olympic Committee and then the National Sport Council. The National Sport Council never responded until later that we have to write another letter request, requesting for an extraordinary general meeting and then all the clubs sign again. That's when the National Sport Council wrote to us back again and then said they have received our, our letter and they are doing an investigation concerning this issue raised in the, in the, in the, in the letter. Then the Ministry of Youth and Sport, Hadrame Sidibe, called us for, an, for a meeting in his office. And then the executive of the Gambia Basketball Association, some of them, like the Secretary General Abdullah Jalo, and then the Treasurer. I, I mean, we cannot call him, we, can, we cannot call her a Treasurer because he, he she never handled our finance in, in, in the basketball, Yasin Jeng, and then one member who is Modundu. We had this meeting in, in Banjul at the minister's office, plus the National Sport Council. We are all there, and then all matters were raised to the minister, and then the minister gave the National Sport Council directive that they should settle this matter once and for all. And then instead of the National Sport Council telling the executive of the Gambia Basketball Association that they should respect our constitution and then do what the stakeholders say, they asked them to call for an AGM. The reason wa was because the Gambia National Basketball Association never had an AGM since 2016. Now let's talk about volleyball at the grassroots level. 100 young people were trained on basic volleyball to hone their skills for the future. The training program is organized by the Gambia Volleyball Federation in partnership with More Better Foundation. Let's get some highlights of the training and also you will hear from the president of the Gambia Volleyball Federation. <music> Well, as a club, we are very keen to expand to Gambia our knowledge because there was a question from Bai, from the Gambian Volleyball Federation, not only for material, but also for support, support in knowledge. And so we asked once to all our trainers, who is willing to come to Gambia? And immediately seven of the trainers said, yes, we are coming and we will help during our holiday. Why did they do that? That's a question. Well, they didn't do it for going on vacation. They did it because they love volleyball and they love the youth and they want this to transpire to Gambia. Uh, you think um, this partnership is something that could yield benefits for the players because they're young and they would want to be professionals someday? Yes, but we are not professionals, but to learn to win. 
to learn to lose, to build teams, and to have a sport where you are not aggressive but respectful is very, very important for the youth. And also the time that it gives to that sport is time that they are not on the street doing other things. We have in our activities every year to organize something for the development of these youths because we know we have development centers around the country and um, young children are being developed in the game but at least once in a year you bring them together and then um, you have this sharing between the different centers but you also have the kids compete among themselves you know that create a very good atmosphere for their growth in the game um, but this year it's there is some additional thing to the whole show because we have this support from the more better foundation and through that foundation they've been able to convince um Kevok volleyball club and the with with, with coaches that are in in, in brussels and in other um, in other towns in in belgium to to come to gambia and participate in this uh, festival and eight coaches have come along to gambia here um, for their holidays, but they will use uh, take at least four days of their holidays to work with us on this program. These are very good coaches. They work with clubs in Belgium, and this year they are here to join in the training, and that is very key, very significant because uh, this is this is really where you see the sharing of experience between the coaches that are developing our children and these coaches from Belgium. And I think uh, there is going to be a lot of take home from our coaches and the young players as well uh, by the time we, we, we end this three days program. So we are very happy to have this going now, starting today, and then it will go up to Sunday, inshallah. My name is Jenna Bakande, a member of uh, Brikama um, Volleyball Association. And I'm, and I'm grateful and be honored to be part of this great um, program yes and I thank God for giving us a very good um, guest here to teach us and we gain some knowledge in it I thank God but before coming here have you played volleyball before yes I have I used to train at box bar with my coaches and my friends Do you love it yes I really love it I was playing football so the time I went to Baksiba, I saw my friends playing volleyball, so I love to play. So I tell them that I would join. So I used to play volleyball, and I love it. My name is Abdusani from Kasakunda Volleyball Team. Okay, coming from Kasakunda to be trained here for three days, how do you feel about it? I feel so, 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 so proud of that. Because this was my third year in volleyball. But I never go for this type of this thing program. I started volleyball in year before last, but this one is my first time to come for program in this type of... Do you love volleyball? Yes, I love volleyball. My name is Awacham. Okay. A team. Circundize. Circundize. Is this your first time to play volleyball? No. I played volleyball year before last, but it, this is my first time for coming in this program. And do you enjoy playing it? Yeah. I was playing basketball. I see my brother playing volleyball. I like to play. That's why. I play it. I go for training every day, Saturday, Sunday. That's all we have for you on tonight's Q Sports. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on sporting until we come your way next week. Bye for now.